you for joining us this morning. My name is Greg Dusek. I am a senior scientist and oceanographer with the National Ocean Service. And I'm here today working with the National Weather Service to give you all some information about rip current awareness. And the purpose of this presentation is to give you rip current messaging and information that you all can share with your communities and your viewers ahead of uh, the holiday uh, coming up July 4th and throughout this summer. And we really wanna to try to get information about what they can do about knowing before they go. So, you know, what can you do before you potentially get yourself in a, in a hazardous situation? And I just wanna let everyone know that if you have questions throughout, feel free to answer, uh, ask them in the questions tab, and then we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. So why do rip currents matter? Why is this important? Uh, Rip currents, as you might know, are the number one public safety risk at the beach worldwide and in the U.S. Last year alone, there were 70 rip current deaths, at least 70, uh, throughout the U.S. And that number is probably a little bit higher because many rip current drownings don't go reported. And then this year, even early on in the beach season, uh, the preliminary numbers indicate at least 21 rip current deaths. And so you know, rip currents are a huge public safety risk. And you can see a couple of the tragic stories here at the bottom of the slide from, from early on in this beach season. And so what can people do before they potentially get in a life-threatening situation um, to, to really know what potential hazards exist and how to avoid them? So before the July 4th holiday, here's a few tips um, that you can share regarding you know, what you can know before you go. Uh, the first thing is, you know, know before you go to the beach, check the beach conditions. Uh, be beach smart by checking weather and water conditions before you go to the beach. Uh, when you get to the beach, be mindful of what the conditions are and know that you know, when you're out the, at the beach for a day, the conditions can change while you're there. And if at all possible, when you go to the beach, swim near a lifeguard. Your chances of drowning when you swim near a lifeguard are much, much lower than when you swim in an unguarded beach. And if you show up at the beach and you're not really sure about what hazards might exist, ask a lifeguard. There are ex experts at the beach that you can talk to uh, about if there might be rip currents in the water. If you see someone caught in a rip current, stay on shore. In many cases, the person that goes uh, to try to rescue someone from a rip is the one that ends up drowning. Instead, if you can, throw them something that floats um, and try to guide them into out of the out of the rip current into uh, safety and go get a lifeguard get someone for help and if all else fails even call 911 and just remember that even professionals like lifeguards always go into the water with a flotation device when they go to make a rescue uh, if you're caught in a rip current the first thing you want to do is stay calm relax rip currents won't pull you under the water they'll just pull you away from shore and if you can swim, if you feel like you can swim out of the rip, swim along shore until you feel like you're out of the current and then follow the waves back to shore at an angle away from the rip. If you're not sure if you can swim out of the rip, you wanna float and then wave your arms and call for help. So what, what is a rip current? Uh, I think that the basic definition is that rip currents are strong, narrow flows of water that extend away from the beach. I think it's important to remember that rip currents can occur on any beach where there are breaking waves. Rip currents are very common and they can pull you away from shore, but again, they won't pull you under the water. Now, I think looking at a video is a little bit uh, better in terms of describing what a rip current looks like. And so here is some footage that we captured out in North Carolina showing a rip current. You can see it there in the center of the video where you have foam and sediment and kind of discolored water extending away from shore, which are good ways to help identify a rip. You'll also notice that there's flat spots in the lines of breaking waves. And that's another key indicator of the presence of a rip current. You'll notice that in this footage, we're pretty high up and away from shore. And so when you show up at the beach, you wanna do the same thing. Don't just go down to the water, stand back, get away from the water's edge, maybe up on a beach access, somewhere higher up where you can see the water surface clearly as that makes it easier to identify a rip. In terms of what typical rip current characteristics are, uh, they can be anywhere from maybe 15 to 100 meters wide. So that's from a couple lane highway up to a width of the length of a football field. They can extend offshore anywhere from 100 to 400 meters. So 100 meters again is about the length of a football field and going out to in extreme cases, maybe a quarter mile. 
durations, they can last anywhere from minutes to months. And that really depends on the, what's causing that particular rip. And then speeds of rip currents can get up to around five miles per hour. Now I know for many people that doesn't sound that fast, but consider that when Michael Phelps set his world record in the 100 meter butterfly, he averaged about five miles per hour. So unless you're an Olympic swimmer, this, you know, this type of current could be enough to cause you some distress. In terms of why rip currents form, this is the same rip now, uh, shown a little bit higher up, and we put dye in it so you can more clearly see where the rip is and how it's flowing. And you'll remember that I said, you know, on either side of the rip, you have waves breaking. And the reason those waves are breaking is because there's a sandbar there. There's shallower water, and that's where waves break. Whereas you don't see many wa much in the way of waves breaking where there's the channel. And that's important because shoreward or closer to the beach from where you see waves breaking, you tend to get an increase in water level, which is known as a setup. And that water level is directly related to the height of breaking waves. So where you have larger waves breaking shoreward of the sandbar, you tend to have higher water level. Where you have smaller waves or not much waves uh, breaking shoreward of the channel, you tend to have lower water level. And as you all know, water wants to flow downhill. So it flows from the regions of higher water level or setup to low setup and then offshore through the rip channel. Now, it's important to note this is just one type of rip current. Uh, these type of rips are caused by changes in the bathymetry or the shape of the bottom near shore. But you can also have rips on a flat beach when you have waves coming in, say, from two different angles, out of the north and out of the south. Or another type of common rip is near a hard structure like a jetty or a pier or a rocky outcrop. And in those cases, that's really important to pay attention to because those hard structures can have rip currents there almost all the time. And so those are areas where you really want to be careful of swimming near. In terms of, of what conditions lead to hazardous rips, I think this is one of the most important things you can communicate to people is that it's not just really big waves that drive rips. You can have strong rips with waves of only two to three feet, and then rip currents tend to be strongest at low tide. And so, you know, when you go to the beach, and it seems like a nice day and the waves aren't that big, you still have to be aware of potential uh, rip currents, especially if you notice that it's at low tide and you see waves breaking over a sandbar near shore, you wanna be mindful of the risk of potentially strong rip currents. So uh, with that, we're gonna wrap up with some of the key points we had. Again, uh, be beach smart, know before you go. Um, I think this is really important to think about you know, what you can do before you get to the beach and before you potentially get in a hazardous situation. So check your local forecast information, your wave forecast, the rip current forecast um, before you get to the beach. And then when you get to the beach, again, be mindful of what the conditions are uh, and, it, and expect that you know, throughout the day, the conditions might change. And if at all possible, swim near a lifeguard. And remember, Lifeguards are experts at the beach that are there to help you ask them if you're not sure about the conditions. If you see someone caught in a rip, do more, stay on shore. Um, often the person that goes in to make the rescue ends up being the one who drowns. So, you know, if you want to help them, uh, throw them something that floats and try to guide them in uh, and out of the rip and in towards shore. Go get help, get a lifeguard uh, or other emergency personnel. And if all else fails, call 911. And again, I'll stress that even professionals, lifeguards, when they go in to make a rescue, they always have flotation with them. And then lastly, if you get caught in a rip, the best thing you can do is try to relax, stay calm. It's not gonna pull you under the water. It's just gonna pull you a little bit away from shore. And then if you feel like you can swim, swim out of the rip current along the beach until you feel like you're not being pulled by the current anymore, and then follow breaking waves back to shore at an angle. If you can't swim out of the rip, then you wanna just float and wave your arms and call for help and hopefully, and eventually someone from shore will, will be able to help you. So we hope that this summer, you'll be able to use this, this information and share it again with your, with your viewers and your communities and stay safe at the beach. And here are the main summary points that we discussed so that you can have those and share those um, as needed. And so now we're going to open it up for any questions that might you might have. And again, please use the chat box um, or the or the question box, and we'll answer those. Thank you. All right, we do have a few questions. Uh, I'll I'll read them off here. Uh, can you tell us are rip currents the same thing as undertows or riptides? 
So that's a great question. Uh, I think often, especially riptides, you'll hear people say that, and that's not really the same thing. We don't like to call rip currents rip tides because they're not a tide. A tide is the water moving up and down, and rip currents are currents. That means water moving horizontally, um, pulling you away from shore. And so we don't like to use rip tides because it really doesn't describe what the phenomena actually is. It's a current. And then undertow is actually a separate thing at the beach uh, caused by waves breaking and water kind of flowing back to the ocean um, a little bit close to the bottom. And undertow isn't really that hazardous either. And rip currents don't pull you under the water. Um, you, they, you'll stay on top of the water and then it'll just pull you away from shore. So there's separate things and, and, and really separate uh, potential hazards at the beach. But, but again, rip currents are not the same thing as undertow or rip tides. Um, how does the wind direction affect the riptide? <laughs> Rip current, yeah. Um, so wind direction doesn't typically have an effect uh, directly because rip currents, again, are caused by breaking waves. But what the wind can do is, is if you have wind blowing enough, it will generate waves. Um, and so then you can affect your rip currents that way. So a good example might be late in the afternoon, you might have a sea breeze, wind blowing straight on shore. If that sustains for a period of time, you could start generating some larger waves, which could then generate rip currents. So, so just by itself, wind isn't typically that important, but um, it does make larger waves, so it's still something important to consider. Um, should you swim toward the water that is shallow, breaking on the bar, if you're caught in the wind or uh, rip current? Yeah, so, so usually if you're in a rip, it's a good idea if you see waves breaking, if you see where the sandbar is, that's a good place to swim to especially if it's really shallow and you can stand up there. Um, if you can get to that point and get your footing, uh, then you can kind of evaluate your situation and get back to shore at that point. So, so definitely that's a good thing to look, look towards in terms of where water's flowing onto the beach instead of away from the beach. It's a great question. All right, we've got a technical question here. Uh, do we have any remote sensing tools that can detect rip currents uh, like uh, Landsat or synthetic aperture radar? That's also a great question. So r right now, I think in terms of remote sensing, what we're, we're most using to look at RIPs is cameras, uh, shore-based ca cameras, webcams even, um, where you can use those to just look at uh, either images averaged over a period of time, and you can start to identify patterns and where waves are breaking, or moving forward, one of the things we're looking at doing with cameras is trying to actually track particles in the water and be able to actually see the flow characteristics from cameras. And so I think that is actually going to be one of the key ways that we, you know, moving forward, how we identify rips and how we observe them is through the use of cameras. Thank you. Um, oh. Are there any signs that a rip current is under development, like sideways waves or anything like that? So are there signs that rip currents are under development? I mean, I think, I think usually you'll look for the same characteristics that I mentioned earlier. You know, you'll look for where you might not have waves breaking. I think that's really one of the best indicators, um, especially if you stand back from the beach and watch the water for some period of time, you'll start seeing those patterns in where waves are breaking. And that's probably the best indicator. Sometimes you'll notice if you see something weird with the waves, waves are, uh, the way waves are breaking, uh, like you start seeing them flowing in different directions and like, like you mentioned sideways, that can also be an indication of a current there that's affecting the wave. So definitely if you see odd things in the wave patterns, that should give you pause and take some time and, and look at that a little more closely because it could indicate the presence of a rip. All right. um, is it safer to sit, uh, swim near uh, piers or jetties or uh, like man-made structures in the water or not? Yeah, so, so definitely not. You don't want to swim, if at all possible, don't swim near man-made structures or any hard structure in the water. Because what that does is, is that structure really focuses wave energy um, and can effectively create an almost permanent rip current there. Um, so they're not generally safe places to swim. Um, and so you should avoid them if you can when you go in the water. All right. How does the swell direction affect the rip current strength and frequency? Yeah, so wave direction is important. We didn't talk about that. Um, but usually your strongest rips occur when the waves are arriving straight on shore. 
whereas if you can imagine cases where waves come in at a, a strong angle, that actually tends to drive in a longshore current, which people might be familiar with, where you kind of end up floating along the beach. And a longshore currents can sometimes be hazardous as well, but when you have those conditions, you tend not to have strong rip currents. So it's really those times where waves arrive straight on shore uh, that you need to be most mindful of, of potential risks. It's a great question. And is the flatter water between the breaking waves a safe space to swim in? Yeah, so definitely not. Um, I think that's one of the, the things that's a little bit counterintuitive because often people see where there aren't waves breaking and they think that's the safe place to swim. But that's precisely the wrong place to swim because where waves aren't breaking is usually indicative of a rip current because the water's deeper there. So the waves aren't hitting shallow water yet. So you really wanna look at those cases and even though it might look safe, um, it could potentially be a rip current. Okay, so I think we've answered all of all of the questions that you all have had. Um, but we, have, we have one more, one more. Uh, uh, about the actual presentation in the videos. Um, where is it? Um, if we have any short video clips that we could uh, use to promote rip current safety, uh, we will be sharing this presentation. We are recording it. Uh, we'll be sharing it. We'll email it out to everyone that's uh, on, on here and I'll be posting it on our website as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, and there's and we will have we have footage also of the same images of rip currents that I showed today that is available to be shared as well. So if you want to use that rip current footage outside of the presentation, that's something that we can make available to you. Yep. Okay, all right. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us, and uh, and um, again, stay safe at the beach this summer, and um, be mindful of potential hazardous rip currents. All right, thank you.